in the series of fetal ultrasound today we will see the assessment of cervix in gravid uterus cervical incompetence is a condition in which the cervix fails to retain the conceptus during pregnancy and the cut off usually is taken as 25 mm most of the times it is idiopathic sometimes due to congenital anomalies connective tissue disorders where the cervix muscle is weak and sometimes because of surgical trauma the majority of preterm births are spontaneous and recurrence risk is high so the history of prior spontaneous preterm birth is the strongest risk factor for the next ptb transvaginal cervical length measurement is an important clinical tool to identify these women at high risk for preterm birth short ranges from 20 to 30 mm in different references normally we see the cervical length ranging from 30 mm to 40 mm so the best cut off is 25 mm so anything which is smaller than 25 mm is usually termed as short cervix so women with the history of prior spontaneous preterm birth and a short cervical length are at the highest risk so whether we should measure it trans abdominally or transvaginally transvaginally of course it is considered as the gold standard because these measurements are highly reproducible and are unaffected by maternal obesity cervical position shadowing from fetal parts and it is the more sensitive tool so how to measure this cervix so there are different programs training programs available online uh, the important being cervical length education and review which is called as clear program which is sponsored by society of maternal and fetal medicine the fmf uk also has the certification course for cervical assessment these are all available online uh, we will see the clear guidelines or a clear concept today as you can see here this is the diagram which they talk about when they are talking about cervical incompetence uh this particular portion is taken as the funnel width when the internal os is open this particular portion is the funnel length and this is the closed cervical length you should always see the image where the anterior lip and the posterior lip of the cervix are equal thickness so that you know this is a proper section of the cervix so what are the guidelines it is of course a transvaginal image you should magnify the image that it occupies 75% of the screen the anterior width of the cervix will equal the posterior width echogenicity should be similar bladder should be empty internal os and external os should be clearly seen endocervical canal is visible throughout and caliper placement has to be correct how is the caliper placement done it is done from the internal os and the external os the cervix sometimes is curved then you should take two or more linear measurements and then add it but you should not press the cervical length that is what these clear guidelines say so this is just in nutshell uh, about the how you take the cervical length measurement these are just the steps uh, which are described and what we saw in the previous slides this is the image as we saw clearly the anterior width posterior width should be equal uh, this will be termed as funnel length this is the closed cervical length this is the funnel length and this is the funnel width then what are the types of cervical incompetence it may be just a short cervix as you can see in this it may be a y shaped incompetence it may be a v shaped incompetence or it may be a u shaped incompetence so as you can see here it is the short cervix in the first image this is the y shaped incompetence where this will be the funnel width this will be the funnel length this is the closed cervical length then sometimes you see it is almost like a v and it is almost open this is the external os and the internal os is open 
this is a u shaped cervical incompetence where you don't see any closed cervical length it is almost open as you can see here this particular portion is the external os so as you can see here it is almost a u shaped cervical incompetence you can see fetal parts in fact protruding here this is the v shaped uh, incompetence this is just a short cervix but then you wait for some time sometimes you see the internal os opening as you can see here this particular portion is quite short so you should see to it that it is the internal os and the external os are properly seen there it is usually a dynamic uh, kind of the situation cervix is a dynamic organ so as you can see here these images are taken just few seconds apart but as you can see here in fact you feel that the internal os is closed but then in just a fraction of second if you see it starts opening up that's why you should be always careful and you should not just scan the cervix insert the probe measure the cervical length and take it out immediately you should extend the examination for 5 minutes visualizing the cervix sometimes it shows spontaneous changes and you should be aware of it cervical stress test sometimes is done between 15 to 24 weeks you can just give some transfundal intrauterine pressure while monitoring the cervical length and look for the appearance of funneling so when should you assess the cervical length all throughout pregnancy well no it should be done between 16 to 24 weeks because before 16 weeks it is not predictive of preterm birth and not advised beyond 24 weeks because the intervention what is done for the cervical incompetence or short cervix is usually done before 24 weeks whenever there is a history of prior preterm delivery then all the guidelines the smfm and acog guidelines suggest that you should do the cervical length screening with transvaginal ultrasound so it recommends a routine transvaginal cervical length screening for women with singleton pregnancy and history of prior spontaneous preterm birth but then what about the women who come without history of prior preterm birth that particular thing is still an object of debate whether you should screen all pregnant patients who come to you between 16 to 24 weeks ultrasound scan with transvaginal ultrasound at present the guidelines say that it cannot yet be universally mandated it is not compulsory it can be viewed as a reasonable and can be considered by individual practitioners but one thing is very clear anybody who decides to implement the cervical length screening should follow the strict guidelines as we saw in the previous slides is there a role of cervical length screening after cerclage well sometimes you see cervical shortening even after taking the cerclage sutures particularly if the cervical length is less than 10 mm but then there are no additional treatment options for a short cervix after cerclage hence there is insufficient data to suggest a clinical benefit of a routine post cerclage measurement or a surveillance in multiple pregnancies well women with multiple pregnancies the cervix is shorter and associated with an increased risk of preterm birth so routine cervical length screening by cvs in multiple pregnancies is a good practice point but again the guidelines don't make it mandatory there was a nice article in fact in 2019 they uh, tried to see the implementation of universal screening for preterm delivery by mid trimester cervical length measurement they wanted to see whether it is feasible to screen all women who come to you for a routine ultrasound scan in mid trimester and what they implemented is the measurement at 20 to 24 weeks is feasible by a transvaginal cervical length measurement and well accepted by pregnant women and it is not time consuming so maybe in coming years it may get included as a part of routine ultrasound scans between 16 to 24 weeks so what one should remember is cervical length measurement of course is a must between 16 to 24 weeks it should be in fact the first image when you start scanning uh, the patient is sitting outside at the reception 
patient has walked up to your clinic so there is a pressure of gravid uterus on the cervix so as soon as the patient lies down in fact you should try and measure the cervix so that you get the exact length of the cervix the bladder to be partially filled it should not be over distended or it should not be completely empty if you are doing a trans abdominal scan of course for trans vaginal scan the bladder has to be empty you should always look at the referral note you should ask the history if there is a prior preterm birth you should always do a trans vaginal scanning you should always look at the preference of gynecologist some gynecologist uh, prefer to have a cervical length taken by a tvs route in multifetal pregnancy it is a good practice point to do a trans vaginal examination patients many a times have a vague lower abdominal pain some pressure uh, down in the cervix or in the vagina they have some tightness so all these symptoms should be looked at and then you should suspect that it may be the short cervix and do a trans vaginal examination but you should be aware of the lower segment contraction you should not falsely label these as uh cervical incompetence as you can see here the closed cervical length is very good and in fact what you are seeing here is not funneling this is not the internal os this is just a focal myometrial contraction on both the sides and this should not be taken as the cervical incompetence and even if you feel that this is internal os you should look at the closed cervical length the data says the references say that if the closed cervical lens is more than 3 cm then and even if the internal os is open it does not really indicate the higher risk of a preterm delivery